I have had the honor of a lifetime to serve as mayor of Athens for three years. I'm the youngest mayor um, in the history of Europe's oldest city. I'd like to tell you that I don't think that anything we have done is as important as what we have done when it comes to harm reduction. Nothing compared. Nothing. Because this is at the end of the day about human life and it's at the end of the day about the right of humans to reclaim their lives. At the annual members meeting of the Correlation European Harm Reduction Network, participants had the chance to visit the drug consumption room of Okana, the largest service provider in Greece. The drug consumption room started as a pilot project back in 2011 to reduce needle sharing and infections, to end overdoses and to reduce public nuisance caused by the open drug sales in Athens. The room could only operate for nine months as a pilot project before the prosecutor shut it down. Athenians had to wait 10 years to be able to finally open it again. So, this is the entrance. People step in. We ask them to, to wash their hands whenever they come on, or we give them masks. Uh, we have here uh, some soap and water device, so we want them to be clean when they first come in. We measure temperature, we measure uh, oxygen. We ask them what time they do drugs uh, before coming here. And uh, we ask them what substance uh, they use uh, here. And uh, we, give you, we give them uh, uh, the right equipment. For Shisa, uh, sniffing, sniffing. Uh, heroin. Uh, or injecting uh, coca, dye or heroin. And next we give them uh, what they want to do their use and uh, we show them that this is the place for injecting drugs, this is the place for sniffing. For sniffing. We have this special uh, Pyrex place with our logo. Uh, also, we have the special uh, vein, um, how do you call this? Scanner. Laser vein, scanner. Vein. We help them to find the vein. Mm -hmm. If there is a good vein, you can see that there are three marks. This is excellent. Yes. We have their base, so they're stable and you can really mark it and inject. We have to, to support their health, yes. by all means, so Somewhere that's why that is, uh, we have these devices. They are not allowed to have any drug dealing. It's clear that you're not allowed to use violence, to uh, involve in a drug use exchange, or something like that. Mr. Theokaris, you have to introduce yourself. <laughs> the president of Okanai, you may already know welcome, him. Welcome to all. We have a DCR, the first DCR in southeastern Europe. All this support came with very, very good and great political support, meaning that we had the first citizen of the country, the president of the Hellenic Republic, who came and inaugurated the DCR. I don't know whether there is another country that this happened, and this is a great success. We have the support of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister paid a visit to the DCR and it was a political commitment of his party to create a, a DCR, which is not also easy for a conservative party to have this so liberal option as political, let's say, commitment. that we place on this kit. This is for injection. That's why we have this. And we have another kit where we place the pipe. So we have the, the safeguard uh, for the pipe, for the mouth, okay, so that they are safe when they use this. This is another uh, kit 
for homeless, for their hygiene, so they can wash their uh, themselves whenever they're out. And we have uh, all the places that they can visit to get some help. Maybe they don't want to enter the area, either the first floor or the DCR. They're allowed to. We always give them equipment if they need to have a safer uh, drug use. Tell us, Kathy. Αυτό είμαστε εντάξει. Προσέχεις. It's really important to show them that we have the naloxone kit here. It's very easy, it's simple, it's safe. We can use it. Everybody in Okana, uh, not only doctors, everybody in municipality, everybody uh, in uh, police, uh, they can have uh, a dose and uh, they can use it. We have used here 45, 46 doses, not only here, but outside, outside the, streets. the streets. Do you give also naloxone to the user? By them? No. No, no. You don't give that. It's yes. not yet permitted by the law, but gradually yes. we'd like to yes. expand that. This is Our thought uh, was to have this uh, naloxone as a take-home naloxone, as a naloxone that they can use the peers, the family, the friends, all people can use it. Till now we have only the professional, at least we have this because we didn't have this in the uh, past. And this is a great weapon for us because we, we have this weapon, but we need to move on. I think that the government is ready to do a step forward. How is the relationship with the neighborhood? Uh, actually, it's very good because prior to opening, I used to have visits and really sensitize them towards what we're going to do. They were really afraid, oh, you're going to gather all these people, we're going to have problems outside and so on. And I said, no, that's, that's the opposite. When we open, nobody's going to stay outside. Whenever there is a problem, they give me a call because they, they know me personally, the whole neighborhood. And things have changed, uh, have bettered for them. Can you explain us what uh, Sisha is and how, it, uh, how this market evolved in Athens? Sisha is crystal methamphetamine. What was important is that through a correlation, we had as praxis the opportunity to work in a joint project back in 2014 and to try to trace uh, new psychoactive substances in Greece. So Sisha, which is practically it's not very new, but homemade sisa, homemade crystal methamphetamine in Athens uh, was something new. So we traced um, some spots where it was manufactured in Athens uh, in a very bad quality, producing um, very big problems in the health of the people consuming it. What proportion of the people that you see are among migrant populations? I would say that at this point, almost 30 to 40 percent are migrants. Oh, really? There are lots of people there out there. And mostly Pakistan and Afghanistan. Yes, yes. Say. And sometimes we, we ask for translators to come along with okay. us while we're doing street work. This use came from some migrant uh, flows that we had, and these people created also some material that they use. We said we will not distribute only Syrix, we will distribute pipes for their use because we saw that the pipes were very thin and they were cracking very easily and they were creating lots of things in their mouth. We started giving the, them pipes and we have almost 6,600 uh, pipes given to them uh, with special uh, mouthpieces and not to transmit these uh, diseases. This is another area, a separate area for CISA smokers. So there are four seats you can see. Uh, we close it uh, and it's pretty safe. We have lots of people who need and demand this kind of support. Yes, it's closed. Yeah. There is a special uh, fun. Uh, Yes, here. to clean the air. And here you can see we have the kitchen, so they can uh, prepare something, they have a snack, they drink, showers for disabled people as well, uh, a laundry. 
here's the terrace where they can stay and relax for half an hour after the drug use. There is an office with uh, the social workers so they immediately can have an appointment if they need to and they step outwards or upstairs if they want to stay on the uh, other area, on the first floor. So this is our DCR. <laughs> Thank you. Really nice. Thank you. They actually enjoyed this. They were really surprised when they saw the quality. And they said, is this for us? Yes. We need them to feel more like we're their family. Extended family trying to uh, give them uh, some emotional support to carry on with their day and later on with their lives towards therapy, whatever they decide and whenever they're ready. Once they want to, to prolong their staying in this center and they have used the DCR, they may come on the first floor and here they can relax, play some games, have some uh, private uh, counseling, eat something, feel that they are safe and uh, relax. We have a recreational uh, room there so people can gather in small groups and do some of the stuff that really expresses their feelings. We have certain appointments with lawyers. The psychiatry usually uh, has his appointments in, in these offices. How is it to be a drug user in Greece? We have been extremely stigmatized and discriminated. On top of that, HIV outbreak came like uh, 12 years before and made things even worse. Actually, that was the turning point when we jumped into the scenery because they needed the communities, they needed the insight, they needed collaboration. We were the first who realized that, uh, no, we have not to be apologetic, not to be asking for help. We have to really fight for our rights, for human rights. And uh, we try to work a lot for dignity, for the dignity of your choices, and for the pleasure, because pleasure is thrown upon. So we wanted to create a union that people are happy to say, yes, I use drugs, I'm not identified, I'm not only a drug user. I'm a person who uses drugs. I'm also a mother, I'm also this, I'm also that. Uh, I'm, you know, this was very new for Greece. There was an alarming need yeah. to, to uh, offer this kind of services to these people for many years. I should say that COVID was the major thing that triggered the experts, the people from the health ministry to help these people. I remember when everything was closed due to the quarantine, I went to the main office and said, these people are gonna die. Yeah. They don't even have water to drink and all the stores are closed. There are no rest, nothing. So we started doing some uh, street working. Here is the, the, the hardcore places. Yeah. Okay, it's the center of the so city. The open drugs. Yeah. Yes. It's the shelter and the day center that we have. And so the ministry is right in the center of everything yes. you do. Yes. Do you have a lot of um, opiate and benzo use, or is it just purely yes, opiate? Yes. Yeah. Opio... That's a big, and street benzos, so yeah. synthetic benzos. Everything. Yeah. And sisa and crystal meth. How do you spell sisa? Sisa. Okay. Yes. And the mayor wa was and is with us in every action that we do. We created with the municipality of Athens and Mr. Bakoyanis, the first hostel for homeless uh, drug users in Athens. During the COVID, this was a point that when COVID here, we had the lockdown in March in 2020. When COVID started, within 20 days, we created the hostel. We have rooms for men and for women. We have also rooms for families and little kids where there is a special place for them. And we also have this dining room where we have in the day center where they can have a small food. How many people are here? How many clients? Uh, 90 people are going to sleep here and 200 people are coming to the day center. Okay, that's pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty too much. There is a need for places like this? Yeah, we need, we need some more, one or two. So 
So uh, we're waiting in a few months uh, five mobile units this year. It will be great for Athens when this happens. We are organizing and preparing uh, mobile units in Thessaloniki, Patra and other areas, big uh, cities of uh, Greece. How is the relationship with police? Police are actually, the, the ones who are nearby, they're very close to us. Before starting these centers, we managed to, set, to visit them and uh, explain and get some sensitivity out of them. And they really support us. They send people here. Whenever they have some a drug user that they know that belong to us, they give us a call and we go to the uh, police department and we take care of the whatever issue there is. So we're on good grounds. We're doing it together. That's the thing with the neighbors, with the police. With, we try to do it together and with drug users who are not here members of this center. We try to relate, that's the, the, the magic word, they have the relationship with them. What about the police? How do you see the role of the police? I don't think they treat people in a humane way, in a humane manner. And I have horrible memories as a user in the streets from the police, from specific police forces. There is this kind of, you know, prohibition issue. You are very vulnerable in their hands because you are illegal. Typically, even with, a, with nothing, with just a small quantity of something, you are illegal. So you can be humiliated and beaten and to say a word. That's a problem with me. It's prohibition is a problem, not exactly. And the legal context is not exactly uh, the policeman or uh, whatever. We should always look at the bigger picture. There must be decriminalization for a series of substances. First, the first, the most important thing for me is the police. We should educate them. And they should really be careful to use the most humane, the, the most uh, advanced, let's say, in human rights persons and not the brutal ones when they have to do with people who do not do harm to anybody but themselves. Personally, I have faith to the people that they work in the police, to some people that they work in the police forces. And I think that uh, by trying to, to treat them in a, a more human way and also from their part, try to treat us as citizens in a human way, we can, we can find some common ground. We are trying to speak louder to the people, to the society, that they should see the problem as if it was theirs. They should see the problem as if it was their relative, a person that they know, a person that they have connection or contact, and they should not see them as uh, marginalized persons or criminals. How do you feel about the opening of the drug consumption room and are you happy with it? They've done a fantastic job. I totally support them and I think we lacked this kind of service and hopefully we're going to have mobile units. Athens need more and more services regarding Drug users. There is a big difference uh, on comparing to the situation that we have 12 years ago. Still, there are many things to be done, uh, mostly to decentralize the efforts and pay attention, apart from Athens, to other urban areas like Thessaloniki and others, and also try to have the engagement of the ministers to implement certain kind of policies in order to bring the whole situation in a better way, not only Athens. And at the same time, to recognize and respect better the role of the civil society and the community. Because many of the things that they break their head in order to find solutions, there are solutions. If you listen and if you engage people that they have experience on this, from their life, no? from, the, from the field. We must be united. When we fight for harm reduction and human rights, and when we are actually defending our community, people who use drugs, we have to be united and to work together because we bring a knowledge and experience and an insight 
that cannot be found anywhere else. And it will be so efficient and so smart to include this in all the procedures. Nothing about us without us. We have an HIV outbreak and skyrocketing mortality rates. The last time the HIV outbreak in drug users was confronted, it was because every stakeholder worked together, civil society organizations, state structures, the Ministry of Health. Let's do that again because it's a necessity.